What's up guys, it's Power Bang here and I am bringing you the first ever episode of the Three Star Bible. I hope you're excited. Now the Three Star Bible is going to be a series comprised of many parts. It's going to help you achieve uh, regular and consistent success obtaining the hallowed three star uh, from your clan war attacks rather than snagging those one stars and two stars that so many are content to settle for and they think it's the best they can do or the best that the base is going to allow them to obtain. And I'm here to tell you that's incorrect. You can get the three star on nearly any base and this series is going to break down the steps needed and the planning uh, that's required in order to make that happen. So to transition to a three star army from those two star and one star armies, uh, you need to change your goal from half of the base plus the town hall to the full base. Now the full base is going to require that you use more precision in your attacks. We're going to go over that in this video and in future three star Bible videos, how you can be more precise and more surgical with your attacks to get more value from your troops. Uh, you need to use less spray and pray, more precision, like I said, and understand that go wee wee, go wipe are not strategies that are going to be reliable to obtain three stars. Now, that might come as a shock or a surprise to many of you that are newer to the channel. Um, I've preached for a long time that go wipe is not the way to consistently get it done, and I'm here to prove that over the course of this series and show you exactly how reliable that some of my methods are. Um, to, to, to do that, we need to uh, to look today, and we're going to look at a Town Hall 8 base. You can see that on the screen. We're also going to look at a Town Hall 9 and show you guys some examples. Town Hall 10 is going to wait till another day uh, because there are some special things that are a little bit different for Town Hall 10 that are required to get that three-star done. So uh, you need to understand the primary defensive threats uh, to your army when you look at a base. Now, the number one by far is the enemy Archer Queen. Now, for a Town Hall 8 base, that isn't going to apply, but we will take a look at that when we look at the Town Hall 9 base in just a moment. Uh, so it's the second biggest threat to a Town Hall 9, and the first biggest to a Town Hall 8 is that clan castle in the middle of the base, typically, and loaded with defensive troops that could come out and kill your attacking force. Now, you need to have a plan for that. So we'll, go, we'll cover that in just a moment. Uh, the next biggest threats are the giant bombs inside the base if you're going to be attacking via the ground, and also the air defenses if you plan on attacking via the air. Now the last thing to take a look at are any supporting you know, defensive buildings that could counter your army composition. Uh, for example, I'm talking about archer towers if you plan to attack via the air or maybe cannons or Teslas um, if you're attacking via the ground. Those are things that you're going to want to you know, take care of if possible um, with a kill squad rather than your primary attacking force. So what am I talking about with kill squad and all this? Now, to develop a three-star plan, we need to address those primary threats of the base like I just spoke about. Um, the clan castle's got to be dealt with. It's the top priority for Town Hall 8s. Uh, for Town Hall 9s, like we spoke of, it's the, the Archer Queen and then the clan castle. Those are the things that you need to consider when approaching a base. Now, the components of a three-star army, uh, you first need a plan to kill the clan castle troops. Now, whether that's luring them or you know triggering them on the fly, you need to have a plan there. Uh, tanking troops are the next component uh, to a successful three-star attack. You need tanking troops, which are troops that are high hit points and can absorb a lot of damage. I'm typically talking of a golem or a lava hound when I'm talking about tanks. Rarely you're going to see giants and hogs fill that role as well. We'll cover that in further detail later. Uh, but let's, for, for this, uh, you know, Example sake, let's look at golems as your tanks. Uh, they are there to absorb damage and keep the heat off of your kill squad, which are your damage dealing troops such as, you know, uh, archers, wizards, minions, uh, and even your heroes that are following up those tanks. Now, funneling is the next key component. Uh, a funnel, what is a funnel? The short version is this. Tra uh, troops in Clash of Clans are always going to target the closest buildings. Now, whether that's a regular troop that's uh, just a normal damage dealer to any building, it's going to go to the next closest building once the building they're attacking goes down. And a defensive targeting troop, such as a hog rider, a giant, a balloon, a golem, a lava hound, they're going to path to the, uh, well, not necessarily a lava hound, but the other four, uh, they're going to path to the next closest defense building. So we need to keep that into account when we're funneling. So funneling is destroying the buildings that potentially that, that could potentially lead your kill squad or tanks astray. Uh, you want to leave up a trail of breadcrumbs that's going to lead your kill squad troops, your damage dealers, 
exactly where you want them to go so that they take out uh, the objectives that you want them to take out. Uh, the next co component of a successful three-star raid are your heroes and your kill squad. Now, that's a designated force that has a job of creating that funnel, uh, you know, directing troops to the core. And uh, those troops are also going to be responsible, including your heroes, for, you know, killing the clan castle potentially and, uh, you know, getting any secondary objectives accomplished. Um, your defensive targeting troops are one of the last components of a successful three-star raid. And this is where the primary shift away from two-star strategies happens because you're not bringing P.E.K.K.A.s as the bulk of your army camp space. You're going to be either bringing hogs or loons. Uh, hog riders and balloons are defensive targeting troops and they do significant damage and they go straight for that defense and take it out. The benefit to this means that... Uh, you know, they're going to take out those defenses so that your kill squad troops survive much longer because they have the luxury of being fired upon by less defenses. So the longer those tanks survive, the longer your damage dealing troops are able to effectively take out the base. Now, the last component, and it's an important one, uh, although it's not the only one, it is cleanup troops. A lot of people forget and just kind of dump everything up front and drop all of their troops on the battlefield. And... It, they end up not, you know, having enough to get to all of the areas of the base and they run out of time. Now, there is nothing worse than running out of time and failing to three-star on a base that can no longer kill any of your troops. The defense is all gone. You just didn't have enough, uh, you know, troops to cover the ground needed to get that three-star. So we're going to learn in a specific uh, video to the cleanup process exactly how to do that. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. So the... Replay. This is SGK has from WHF Rising, and he's going to go ahead and drop. First off, he's got uh, golems that have come in. Now I'm going to pause it here when he gets his uh, troops deployed, just like so. And now what I want you guys to pay attention to: there is a surprise Tesla over there that's popped. Uh, but what he's done is he's dropped a golem uh, right here and over here. Now what that's done is the defenses in all of the areas kind of highlighted on the screen right now, they're all targeting those uh, golems and the wizards are free to create a funnel um, so that he can get in to the core uh, with his follow-up king, uh, you know, and, and once he breaks open that wall, those golems are going to redirect because what he's trying to do here is to redirect into the core to also accomplish his secondary objective, which is taking out a double giant bomb that's between uh, the air defense there and that archer tower. And taking that out will eliminate the risk of the, you know, the hog riders hitting that during his raid. Um, so let's go ahead and watch this in action. Uh, everything's kind of getting taken out here. He does finally get that Tesla taken out on the left. And at this point, uh, you'll see him drop a P.E.K.K.A. and his king out of the clan castle. And the wall breakers go down to open up this wall. And that's going to redirect those golems uh, into the base. So here they come. The clan castle comes out. The next job he has is to take care of that. So he drops a rage spell. That's going to allow his wizards to lock onto that, uh, that dragon up there and take it out. Uh, really, really easily. There's a poison spell there to assist in him taking out that clan castle, and now that is down. So on the back side of the base now, he's gotten his troops in. Uh, he's almost to the point where he can trigger those double giant bombs, um, but now it's just a matter of sending hog riders in, uh, targeting all of the defenses, and he's chosen to do this surgically and with precision, uh, which means he's sending just a few hogs to each one of the uh, defense buildings, and then he has heal spells there to go ahead and keep those hog riders up. Now, as they path in, they get all of the defense buildings taken out, and check this out. At this point, how much of the base is left? He's got 32% of this base still to take out, but he has no defensive buildings left uh, to combat him. He's got a ton of hog riders up, and that is going to be that. Everything taken care of. Um, he's gotten you know, his defense targeting troops in there to, to wipe out this base, and he's got the cleanup troops necessary to go ahead and get it done. So very, very nice three-star there from SG, uh, SGK has. I always mess up his name. Let's take a look at another example, guys, on uh, three-star strategies from a Town Hall 9's perspective and see how you know these things that we talked about with regards to tanking and funneling and kill squads uh, will come into play. It's even more important at Town Hall 9 because you have that Archer Queen to deal with. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, we're going to check out a Town Hall 9 attack now, as you can see. Uh, transitioning to a three-star mindset, look at the results that you're going to have. All of these are Town Hall 9s. 
Every single one of them three-starred, guys. That's exactly the type of results you're going to see uh, when you buy into this mentality. Uh, but enough showing off. Let's go ahead, uh, open up the attack we want to take a look at here. And let's take a look and pause the base first. Now, uh, this is going to be an air raid. We looked at a hog raid from the Town Hall 8 perspective. Let's look at the air raid from the Town Hall 9 perspective. He wants to, uh, in addition to killing that queen and taking out that clan castle troops, he wants to make sure that he gets some air defenses as well uh, with that kill squad and his tanks that he's going to send into the base. So uh, starting the attack, uh, the judge is going to come in from the bottom here and notice the spread that he has on his golems. That has gone ahead and tanked all of the defenses on the bottom of that base, and that's going to allow him to drop in his wizards to go ahead and create a funnel. Now, that funnel's being created right there by the two wizards on each side, and once those buildings go down, notice the buildings in the middle by that research lab are going to lead him right up the gut of this base, assuming that wall is open, and you'll notice he's brought three wall breakers to make that happen. Uh, so his heroes are going to go down. He's got his queen uh, that goes down first. It's important that you delay your barb king. That's a mistake that a lot of people make. We'll talk about that more in future videos as well. Uh, but the wall is opened up, and you'll see a third golem comes down, and earthquake spells are going to open up the path to get to that queen. Now, the earthquakes are not always the way to go, but that's the way uh, that the judge chose for this base. But notice um, he's opened up a path to two air defenses as well, and you're going to see the queen, along with those three golems he's brought for cover, uh, she's going to go ahead, work her way in, and take out the two air defenses as well as that, uh, you know, archer queen uh, the enemy has there. He's trailed in his barbarian king. Uh, both air defenses are down at this point. They've locked on to that enemy queen, and we will go ahead and pause it here, and you'll see that he already has his defense targeting troops uh, heading into the base. Now, uh, they're walking straight in. Uh, they're taking out these defenses. He has some lava hounds come in from the top, and they go straight to the air defenses who lock onto those hounds to provide cover for the balloons that come in uh, to take everything else out. So uh, absolutely wonderful pathing here from the judge, but you'll notice again, guys, that this base has already had all the defenses destroyed with the exception of those expos in the middle. He's got the help of the queen, and he's got his balloons there. And at this point right here, Everything in the base is down. He still has 30% left to go, and he's chosen to drop uh, three goblins. He's dropped them on the collectors of this base, and that is going to help him clean up a little bit faster. So that's you know the cleanup troops we talked about, and he's also got the lava pups that came out of the lava hound to help him clean this thing up even faster. So we'll start to fast forward, guys. Hopefully you could see what we're talking about uh, by bringing first a kill squad, which is you know some tanks in front of some damage dealers to accomplish some initial objectives. Getting those initial objectives taken care of, the Archer Queen, the Clan Castle, um, if you're at Town Hall 10, an Inferno Tower, um, getting those things taken out ahead of your main damage dealing force, which should be hogs or balloons, is going to be critical to you know maintaining consistent success getting those three-star attacks done. Uh, so guys, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I've got a full series, at least 16 episodes coming out in the near future on the three-star Bible and all of the little tips and tricks that you need to start seeing consistent success, getting those three-star strats uh, in your arsenal and putting up three stars for the good guys. So in the next episode, uh, we're going to look at how to properly scout a base uh, and what types of defense targeting troops you're going to want to bring in order to get that three star uh, for the good guys that we spoke of. It's either going to be hog riders or it's going to be balloons. So tune in next time. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do that. Uh, there'll be a link in the outro for you to go ahead and do that or, uh, you know, just hit that subscribe button up in the, uh, the, the about bar. So, guys, that's going to be all for uh, this time. This is Power Bang signing out, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bird's gonna have about a minute and 10 seconds left on this base. And there we go. So, three stars for the good guys. Rock and roll.